Hi, my name is Yimin Go, and today I will be sharing about an open hardware high vacuum storage for TM holders that can remedy and quantify hydrocarbon contamination. Here on the right is a residual gas mass spectrum of a TM holder commonly stored in desiccated cabinet. We have carried out similar measurements on several other holders, and they all show that TM holders are inherently dirty, and they introduce a range of unwanted species into vacuum. So we have come up with a high vacuum storage solution that also includes a backup system. In this talk, I will show you how this manifold can offer up to four orders of magnitude reduction in adsorbed species on TM holder and helps to elevate monolayer adsorption during TM experiment. The design in this talk is published entirely open source so that you can easily replicate it at your own user facility. Hydrocarbon contamination has been a plaque in high resolution and analytical electron microscopy since the invention of the instrument in the 1930s to 40s. The deposition of a hydrocarbon layer increases specimen thickness and that results in low quality electron micrograph due to beam broadening and the loss of contrast. In spectroscopic analysis such as eels, the number of plasmonic scattering scales with specimen thickness and, when combined with the scattering of a large carbon KH cross-section, it generates a signal so strong that it obscures our other elements of interest. De Young et al. provided a nice summary here based on analytical calculation showing that TEM and STEM resolution degrades with specimen thickness. So increased specimen thickness due to hydrocarbon deposition is detrimental to imaging resolution and also spectroscopy sensitivity. We also need to concern ourselves with non-hydrocarbon contaminants such as water and oxygen molecules. Luna et al. provided images here showing that radicals derived from water and oxygen molecules can cause lattice damage by chemically etching the specimen, as shown by the dark region here surrounding blue color prism lattice. This process is often mistaken as knock-on damage when it is actually a chemically assisted process. In cryo-electron microscopy, we have excessive moisture that can form crystalline ice and diffracts electron, which also compromises the structural integrity of our specimen. So in all kinds of imaging, be it high resolution, chemical or low temperature, we would require the cleanest condition. So, in microscope using oil-based diffusion and rotary pump, the backstreaming of oil vapor back into the high vacuum column is actually a major concern. This image by Kurt Lasker, the vacuum manufacturer, showed that the oil vapor can condense and accumulate at the top of pump. Ridinghouse and Huber have also shown that backstreaming rate is linear with pressure and is non-zero even at 10 to negative 6 torr pressure. In fact, they concluded that Continuous operation in the 10 to a negative 4 tall range will result in a backstreaming rate that has equivalent vapor pressure of 10 to a negative 9 tall. So if we operate the vacuum in the load lock with a similar pressure range of 10 to a negative 4 tall, we would get 10% coverage in contaminant for our specimen within just one minute of operation. So if we operate in a 10 to a negative 6 tall vacuum with oil diffusion pump, over one day, of operation would give us 100% coverage in contaminants. So oil gas diffusion would drive backstreaming over time and accumulate oil droplets on our specimen and specimen holder. The effect is non-negligible. So we should trans transition to fully oil-free system on top of just high vacuum microscope. So that will give us the cleanest vacuum possible. However, besides clean microscopes, contaminants can still be sourced from elsewhere. Here is an XPS result showing a clean of the box specimen grid in red color and also a contaminated grid that has gone through 10 pumping cycle in the TM in green. And on the contaminated grid, we see fluorine peaks matching the composition of high vacuum grease commonly used on TM holder O-ring. So if such a small amount of grease can show up in our spectrograph, we want to look in details the other kind of contaminants on TM holders. So you have probably seen a holder being stored like this in desiccated cabinet or even worse just left on the table. The RGA spectra of such a holder in desiccated cabinet looks like this. The RGA infer chemical species by their mass to charge ratio and then plot partial pressure with respect to it. The contaminants on our holder are hydrogen, water and oxygen, organics and other viscous palm oil. So with high vacuum storage in manifold overnight, 
we lower the level of this residual gas by one to two orders of magnitude. We did the similar thing on six other holders, also usually stored at ambient conditions. The types and levels of residual gas are similar, and overnight storage is important in getting the residual gas down by several orders of magnitude. It consists of high vacuum components, uh, RGA, turbo molecular pumping station, and a total pressure gauge. The total number of holder pods can be customized to suit a facility's need. We would like to recognize inspiration from facilities with custom TM manifolds such as Cornell University and the Canadian Center for Electron Microscopy. On top of the design, we added the RGA which allowed us to assess residual gas level specifically. Now, here is a pump down time comparison between a holder exposed to ambient air for over one day in red and also holder with high vacuum storage but only 10 minutes of ambient exposure in blue. The latter achieves partial recovery four times faster and pumped down to two times lower pressure in about half the time. The overall reduction in species and improved pumping speeds reflect the cleaner condition of RTM holder. For an experienced user that only needs 10 minutes to mount a sample, this is a hopeful outlook that we can pump down to better condition with a cleaner TM holder and get a more effective imaging session. Just now we showed that residual gas level is lowered by 1 to 2 orders of magnitude with overnight high vacuum storage. Now, by baking the holders for 48 hours at 130 degrees Celsius, residual gas level is lowered by a total of 4 orders of magnitude down from ambient storage. It is worth noting that, above 35 AMU, the heavy species and pump oil are effectively removed, or below the detectable limit of 10 to negative 10 torr. And according to the Langmuir isotherm, where one monolayer forms at pressure of 10 to a negative 6 torr, by lowering pressure to below 10 to a negative 10, we have extended monolayer absorption time to about 5 hours, which is the typical duration of a TEM experiment. The bake-out chamber consists of a bulb in holder flange and is connected to an external electrical potential through the electrical feed-through. We calibrate the bake-out configuration such as current and voltage needed to get to 130 degrees Celsius using a heating holder. And thermal images of the manifold show that external temperature range from 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. So it is relatively safe for the O-ring doing in the butterfly flock during the bake-out process without degrading it. We recommend bake-out for any specimen that can withstand moderate level of heating. According to Boltzmann statistics, the surface molecules can be approximated as a distribution of binding energies. So by baking at 130 degrees Celsius, we promote desorption rate by 35% over just room temperature. Even for a specimen that is not so resistant to heating, we can still have it at slightly higher temperature than just room temperature, and that would still have result in slightly better desorption rate than room temperature. Here is the blueprint and part list for the manifold. The complete study including assembly instruction is published in the Microscopy and Microanalysis Journal. The total cost for the manifold is $24,000, which may sound like a lot, but if you compare that to the annual facility loss due to contamination, it is actually very worth it. By assuming an hourly user rate of $50, for a microscope use 14 hours a day, 6 days a week, if a TM facility have 5 such microscopes, over the span of 1 year, if 10% of user time is lost to contamination, then we would have incurred more than $100,000 in revenue loss. So the manifold cost is only less than a quarter of the annual economic loss not accounting for the opportunity cost. So it is crucial that we invest in a contamination solution that can also boost scientific productivity. Here is a video showing the operation of the manifold. We hope that you will find this design useful to be implemented at your facility. I would like to thank my fellow collaborators at the University of Michigan. Jonathan Schratz, Emily Rennick, Dr. Tauma, Bobby Kearns, and Professor Robert Hofton. We recognize Cornell University and the Canadian Center for Electron Microscopy for their inspirations, and also thank Eckhart Autocraft for the design of the manifold support frame. Please let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching my talk.